Welcome to part two of Project Assistance video series on variance analysis concepts on Microsoft Project 2013. In part one, we reviewed general concepts of how variance analysis works in Microsoft Project. In part two, we're now going to take a look at how schedule variances work. As you may recall, we talked about the definition of variance as being the difference between the current estimates, or in this case the start and finish dates, versus the original estimates or the baseline start and the finish start. Whenever the current estimated start date is different from the baseline start date, a start variance will be automatically calculated by Microsoft Project. The same is true for the finish dates. Let's, took a look, let's take a look at Microsoft Project. The first thing we want to do before we do variance analysis is confirm that our plan has been baselined. One of the ways we can validate that is to take a look at the baseline table. So I can right mouse click on the select all button above my ID column and in this case I'm going to choose the baseline table. I can see here that the baselines have been set for this project. In order to check variances on a project plan, one of the basic ideas we want to have is how to apply views, tables, and filters. So it helps to have some general concept of how Microsoft Project does reporting. Okay, so in basic Microsoft Project reporting, what we can do is use the concepts of a view. A view brings together a filter, a table, and a group. So if I go to View, More Views, I can edit my views, and I will see in this case that the definition of a view, for example, the Gantt chart, has the entry table, no group, and the all task filter. So what is a filter? It selects certain resources, or certain tasks, or if you will, rows, in my project plan. Again, if I go to Filter More Filters, I can edit my filters. Same is true for tables. They provide a group of fields I can look at. There are several predefined tables. So if I go to Table More Tables, I can edit my tables. And for groups, they allow me to group or summarize things on certain fields. And I can also look at that by choosing Group More Groups. So let's go to Microsoft Project and see how this concept works. If I apply the variance table, I can see which of my tasks have variances. If I apply the tracking table, I can actually put in start and finish dates. So here we see some actual start and some actual finish dates. When I look at the, the variance table, I'm going to focus just on these top couple of tasks here. Okay, what we can see is that the start date was scheduled for August 21st, 2013 for the current estimate, but the original estimate was the 19th. Therefore, it started two days late, or it's scheduled to start two days late. The same is true for the finish date. The baseline finish was August 28th, is now August 30th, so we can see that there's a variance on the finish as well. If we go to the next task, we can see that it was scheduled to start on August 29th. It's now scheduled to start on the 2nd of September, two days late. Same true for the finish dates. Note also there's a view called the Tracking Gantt. What the Tracking Gantt shows us is the difference between the original start date and the current start date. So we get a visual cue when things are tracking on or off schedule. We can also apply filters. So when I apply a filter from the view menu I see a drop down here and we can see different filters. For example late tasks. If I choose filter more filters I can edit the late task filter and get a sense of what the late task filter is going to look for. And there's actually a status field called late. Let's take some other examples here. 
I like the filter called Slipping Tasks. If I edit the Slipping Tasks filter, it's informative from the standpoint that it looks at the actual finish not equal to NA. What this is telling us is don't, sh don't show me tasks that haven't been baselined. Baseline finish not equal to NA means that the task does not have the value of NA in there. Well, if it did have the value of NA, it would mean it wasn't baselined. Okay? So, the, so it hasn't finished. Actual finish not equal to NA. Baseline finish not equal to NA. It has been baselined. And the current estimated finish date is greater than the original estimated finish date. So this is telling us that it's not finished, but it's scheduled to finish late. Now we can filter for slipping tasks. So if I apply that filter, project will tell me which tasks are starting to fall behind. I also mentioned views. Okay, so if we choose other views and more views, we can actually create views. So for example, I can call something, I'm not going to, I'm not going to edit this view, I'm going to create a new view. If I choose slipping tasks, I can choose the table called variance. That gives me a group of columns related to the variance states. I'm going to leave the group empty for the moment, so I'm going to choose new, no group. And for fil filter, I'm going to choose slipping tasks. I can show it in the menu. I can say OK. So now when I choose my menu, for example, right mouse clicking on my views, I can see my slipping task filter. Notice that it applied the, the, the columns or the fields for the variance table and it showed me the slipping task. I would also remind you that on the task menu there's something called scroll to task and that will bring my current tasks into view. I can also apply the tracking Gantt which will give me a visual cue of how these tasks are doing. In part number three we will go through a similar evaluation of how work variances work.